Hey designers, welcome back for part two on how to create a coffee bag and coffee cup mock-up. I recommend that you go start back at part one where I show you how to create the OBJ 3D files using Adobe Illustrator. In this part two, I'll show you how to assemble all of those together and make a mock-up that you can render a bunch of different angles of and impress to your clients. So let's keep going. All right, now I have a new Adobe file open and what I will start with always is going to 100% zoom and making this canvas larger, like 2000 pixels. And then um, making the resolution 300 DPI so that I have a really nice crispy render. Now I am ready to start dragging in my objects. So I'm gonna start with the coffee cup. So this, that's what we started making first, so. Let me get my coffee cup into position. I like to change my horizon line so they're not at a diamond shape, that they're like straight on, just cause I think it makes it easier to tweak and move things around. And then as I'm bringing these in, I'm labeling them so I know what I'm clicking on and when. So there we have our cup and I'll just add materials as I go. So if I scroll down and I come to, I need a paper. Let's try diagonal paper and see what we get there. I need to grab that red value. Sometimes it remembers, sometimes it doesn't. So I think once I grab it one time, it'll help me out and remember. So, okay, cool. And then I'm gonna bring the repeat up to like three or four so that it has more of the texture of the cup. All right, let me get my lid. So I think I'll just keep it as it comes. Um, using my align tools to center and center and then tweaking the position of the cup so that it doesn't show through. All right, and then I have my heat sleeve here, dropping that in. This is definitely gonna be diagonal paper, maybe even cardboard would look good. Cardboard looks great actually. Again, selecting all of these, coming to align and doing center and center. Then I can take my heat sleeve and drag it up to where it fits. Kind of snug, but with a little bit of room like the example. And then at the top, this is where we're bringing in our little coffee hole. All right, I'm gonna drag it up, rotate it around 90 degrees, sink it down, get it placed where I want it. Just using my controls to get it lined up. I'm going to make the height like one centimeter. That way it gives me a little bit of depth to work with. I know it's not a hole per se, but it can give the illusion of it, especially if I come into the material and I make the roughness and the darkness like way darker. Like it can give the illusion in certain lighting that there is indeed a drink hole right there. Okay, so now that I have this cup done, I am going to group it all together so that when I move it around, I'm not like moving one piece apart, I'm keeping everything together. So just selecting all of these, holding shift, and then this folder, I can group it and call this cup. And then I'm going to find my position because I need to get some camera bookmarks going so that I have like my front and my back. So zooming out, I need to leave room for the bag and I can always change these later, but camera bookmarks and I will click or I will just type front. That way, if I start moving around when I'm assembling this bag, I at least have a front to come back to. Now I'm gonna drag in my bag and click down, um, click this button that grounds it to the plane and I'm going to rotate and reposition right there. And I can already tell I'm gonna to need to raise this up a little bit, which is fine, because I just moved it on front and I click this wheel, it saves a new position for me. And this is gonna be that like soft touch, so I'm gonna go with matte because I think that's gonna be the best texture. Like they already kind of come in matte, I just like to check it just because. Next, I want to bring in the edge. So where's my edge? There it is. Same thing, drag matte over top and choose my color from my swatch panel. All right, 
right, I'm coming back to Illustrator to recreate this edge because I want it to be really perfect. So I'm actually going to come back here and I'm going to make a really thin but somewhat smaller edge to the coffee. So I just duplicated this shape here and I made two copies. I just made them slightly smaller and then I'm clicking on the minus under Pathfinder. And then from here, I'll click extrude and I'll create a depth of like 0.1 inch. Let me rotate that around and see. I think this is going to be easier for us to line up and then really look good next to the bag. I actually need to connect these two points at the bottom. So I'm going to drag to the center that point and drag to the center there too. And that'll give us the best shape. So let me re-export that one more time. So now I have a true arch of an edge, um, bag and edge. Again, we're aligning, we are learning and improving. You're getting my knowledge live. So here you go. <laughs> okay. So now that I have that inset, that looks awesome. I'm really happy with that. That is so much easier to duplicate and drag over to create those insets. And I also want to make sure that I'm choosing matte and matte so that they match the bag and the final rendering. Sometimes it looks matte when you drag it in, but it just might be a little bit off. So I always make sure that I have them all match. Now it's time to add that smell hole. I don't know what else to call it. <laughs> There's probably a word for it. And I'm just calling it something terrible. And now we're going to bring that back. I actually want the edges and the bag to be grouped together because they're in the right spot. All right, bag and the smell hole I will select and we'll put those center and forward. That way that little smelly thing, let's look at the reference one more time. My computer's slowing down. That way it has the smell and it's a little bit higher than where I have it. But that's good because it's not on the curve and that always makes things easier. So I'm going to apply a matte finish to that. All right, so now that I've come to these little guys, I can break the link to material so that these holes have their black fill. Um, otherwise it will just change the whole shape. So you do want to make sure that you click on that little link, just like this. And then we're going to make sure that it lines up with that bag so that as we rotate it around, it is in there. Oop, and I can see that I need to adjust the bag and the edge a little bit. Whose dog is that? Someone shut your dog up. All right, now it's time to add that top piece of the bag. So top, we're dragging it. We're raising it up, flipping it around. So we're gonna apply matte to this too. And I will choose that same red so everything is cohesive. And I know that I'm going to need to stretch this because remember we made it 2.5. Um, so I'm just gonna use this slider to get us to where we're going. So yeah, 6.82 looks really good. And then the other thing I need to do is put on those little sealy strip things. That was this little guy here. Rotate up. We're gonna place that in that lower portion. All right, here we go. I'm already seeing some gaps that I need to fix. All right, that's fixing that gap. And then we have the seal. I'm going to duplicate that, Command D, and bring that down as well. And they're a little off center, so what I can do is click on top and seal, and seal, go to align, and center those. All right, so now that I have all of those pieces, I can group them together. I can call this bag. And I can put it in its rightful place. Let's use our camera bookmark, go back to front. And now we can rotate it to put it where we need it. Cool, cool. 
And now I can go and I can add a label. So let me just create a label really quick for me to place in there. So now that I have my graphics, I'm going to select it, export selection, and export selection. And I'm going to export those as PNGs. And then to add your graphics, it's as simple as dragging and dropping it where you want it. And then you can adjust it, put it in the center. I'll probably change the colors because red's not my favorite. So you can change each of the individual colors or change all of the colors. But I'm just going to go with what I want. All right, and then same with my cup. I can add my same logo and I can even change the color of the cardboard. Well, let me change the color of the cup. Now I'm going to do the opposite. So my sleeve will be blue because I have to match my logo and the cup will be tan. This is how it looks. Alright designers, that wraps up this tutorial. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. I have a bunch of other videos and we'll be adding more. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching.